sometimes we need to learn our orchestra music in a very short time to prepare for that first rehearsal. In some cases, you might only have a couple days, and in more extreme cases, if you're a last-minute sub, you might only have a couple hours. This is also the case if you have a ton of other music to practice, like your chamber music and solo repertoire, in addition to orchestra, and you need to really allocate your time wisely. And of course, this holds true for anyone who is limited by how much physical practice they are able to do, either because they're recovering from an injury, or maybe because they have family or other work obligations that take up a lot of their time during the day. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live, helping you along your musical journey. In this video, you're going to get five progressive steps to help you prepare efficiently and well for the first orchestra rehearsal. This is pretty much the way I prefer to do it, and of course, you can apply your own variations that work for you in your situation, and also depending on what music is on the program. Be sure to watch until the end because I'm going to throw in a bonus tip that's going to help you get better and better at preparing orchestra music in a short time over the long haul. Step one is to listen to a recording if there is one. Assuming this is not a world premiere without any mock-up digital sketches of the piece available, it's important to get an overall idea of the style, form, and the tempi of the piece. So I would start by listening while following along with a score to become familiarized which instruments have the themes, how a melody is being passed around, where the transitions happen, where the primary and secondary voices are, how they switch, in general how things line up, and etc. If your work is in the public domain, most likely the score is going to be on imslp.org, so you can easily go and find a score to follow. And also sometimes you can get lucky and find a recording on YouTube where you can listen while following the score in the video. Step two is to put cues from the score into your part as needed. So for example, what to listen for before an important entrance, who you are doubling, which instrument you're playing a melody with, and also, of course, be sure to mark off any exposed section solos. Of course, mark off also if there is a concertmaster solo, for example. If there is any divisi and you already know which part will be yours, go ahead and mark off the corresponding line that uh, is going to help you to instantly know where to look. So then, with your part marked with cues, it's time to listen to the recording again. This time, following along with your part instead of the score. Now, if you need to, you can always go back to step one and add in more cues uh, from the score if you need to. So while you're listening and following the part, you can either sing the part along or you can even lightly play some of it as you listen. You can repeat this a couple times. Step three, and you'll probably be doing this during step two. As you're listening to the part, you're most likely going to be able to identify all the hot spots to practice where all the gnarly technical passages are. Now, symphonies are very long and ain't no one got time to practice every single note, especially if you have a whole stack of other music that you need to be practicing. However, when you do have the easy stuff, please learn about what is going on in the orchestra during those times. Many people fall into this trap of just glossing over all the easy stuff and then when they get to rehearsal, they kind of get mixed up and lost because they skimped out on getting familiarized with the score. If you do a good job with steps one, two, and three, you won't need as much physical playing for your preparation as you would need if you had just started reading through the part from the very beginning without any listening or score studying. Before we get to step four, if you are getting any value from this video so far, I would greatly appreciate if you could give me a quick thumbs up down below to help support this channel. Step four. Now is the time to practice with a metronome and decide on fingerings. And if you did not receive any bowings, you can kind of put in initial bowings. Practice patterns like arpeggios and harmonic sequences 
and try to stick to a finger pattern that will be reliable at the final tempo. Often it is helpful to minimize how much shifting there is in favor of string crossing across the same position, especially if there are large leaps. For example, this is common in first violin parts of Brahms symphonies. So your decision on whether to play those large leaps and arpeggios across strings in the same position versus uh, shifting, it largely depends on, well, many things actually, it depends on your comfort with string crossings versus comfort with shifting, but also the tempo, what will blend best with the section, and also where your intonation and sound quality will be more reliable. In some cases, this is a personal decision and one that might change over several years of playing the same piece over and over. Finally, step five is to practice playing along with a recording. This can be challenging because we don't see the conductor while playing along with the recording. So of course the tempo changes especially will be approximate. And of course we also have to keep in mind that at the rehearsal we should be ready to play at a different tempo and with a different interpretation. So it's important to have that kind of flexibility. For these reasons it's important to pick a recording that's of high quality but also one that is has good clarity and is more or less easy to follow. So for example, there are dozens of great recordings of the Brahms symphonies, um, but I noticed that certain ones for me have been helpful uh, to use as study recordings, if you will. On the other hand, we don't always have the luxury of choosing from a dozen of recordings of the same piece, especially if you're going to play a world premiere, in which case maybe the composer uh, actually was able to send you a MIDI file to listen to in order to kind of become familiarized with the piece. And also while playing along, I strongly recommend for you to wear headphones at least in one ear. I mean, unless you have giant speakers in the room with good acoustics, most of you will be listening either through your laptop, tablet, or phone speakers. And of course, this means that the instrument, it's right near you, um, the sound of your instrument is gonna drown out that recording. So that's why I recommend wearing headphones. Here is a bonus tip for those of you who made it this far. Thank you for watching. One of the most important skills to develop that will enable you to learn orchestra music faster is to practice sight reading. The better you are at sight reading, the quicker you will learn music. And of course, the skill is super important for anyone who plays in orchestras professionally, especially when there is a new program every week. Now, I wasn't someone who was naturally good at sight reading growing up, but I am going to put a video right over here where I talk about tips on improving your sight reading beyond simply doing it every day. That's it for today's video, and if you'd like a summary of my latest content, I have a free newsletter called Musicians Pursuit of Excellence and Well-Being. Links down below and upon signing up you'll also receive a free PDF and it's a way for you to reach me directly. Happy practicing!